Is that the cat's front walking down the stairs? Oh yeah, that's Cecil. He's a beast. Yeah, he sounds like a man. Uh, oftentimes he's making noise in the house, and I think there's someone in the house walking around. It's cat bus. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I really have nothing much to say right now. My life doesn't seem to be that interesting. I've been having lawn mower issues. Someday I was going to mow the lawn, but it was out of gas. So Monday morning, before I went to work, I was going to mow the lawn. I went down, got gasoline, filled up the gas tank, wouldn't start. Tried again Tuesday night, ended up weed whacking a large portion of the lawn just so I could feel like I did something. Yesterday, it again wouldn't start, except for starting up just for a second and then stalling out on me a few times. You're such a married guy. I know. It's like, this is this is what's happened to me. This is my life now. Shirt's looking good? Yeah, looking good. Ooh, yeah. Unbox. That's what we're going to do today here on <laughs> Unboxing. We're going to look at our mailbag. we got a lot of packages today. And we're going to thank our donors, people who went to welcometothebasementshow.com and donated to support this show. Jared, Emily, Joe, Mer- Merlin, Maurizio, Neon Wizard, Sean, Stefan, Malcolm, Luke, Dan, Bet or Betty, and Michael. Thank you all. It really means a lot. Tim Lemire writes, what movie would you remake or reboot? Uh, for me, that's easy. It would be The Golden Compass. Oh. The first movie of the His Dark Materials trilogy, which only became one movie because the first movie didn't work at all. Bombed. Um, totally bombed. It, and, and I shouldn't say didn't work at all because there's some brilliant aspects of the movie visually. It's stunning. You just can't follow it. It made me want to read the book, and I'm happy I did, because now I want to see a movie based off of the book. Famously, the original script of the movie was written by Tom Stoppard, but the director threw away Stoppard's script and he's like, you know what, I can do better than the, one of the greatest living playwrights of all time. My answer to that question would be Fright Night, but it has already been rebooted, and I like the reboot. Glacius X2 writes, Hey Matt, you have a lot of great Batman comics, which we saw in our previous episode. But no The Killing Joke? I am disappoint. Well, I'm sorry that you are so disappoint, but... In fact, I used to have The Killing Joke in my comics collection. A former roommate of mine gave it away. (laughs) At first I was upset by this. It was not a first edition, and I had read it probably about 50 times, so I was okay with it. And I have many other Batman comics that I didn't show off on the show, so, you know. Can't show them all, then the show would be three hours long. Yeah, that's right. Hoo-Ha's Grocery, is that what this is? No, Hogan's. I wish it was Hoo-Ha's. Hoo-Ha's, where we've got you all in check. <laughs> so they move into the cave, and they start playing caveman for a little while. Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. Soon I will cease these formalities as we are pursued by hordes of road people. Well, I'm sure we've got some nice baked Alaska for dessert. Eat your baked beans. That's not very funny because Anchorage has been baked today. The family decides they're going to be more neighborly to the Johnsons. By this time, the Johnsons are naked, covered in body paint. They've set up an elaborate pig-chasing ritual. (laughs) And now, the Zatoichi Report. My quest to watch all 25 Zatoichi sequels in 2016 continues. What number are we on this week? We are on the same number we were on last week. I didn't get a chance to watch one, but I'm going to talk about one of the ones that I have watched that we haven't really discussed on this show. Good. That would be the fourth in the series, Zatoichi the Fugitive. We didn't really talk about the fourth one because I believe you did five in one week. Yep, Cinema okay. Immersion Tank. In this one, Ichi sumo wrestles. What? That's right, he gets in a sumo wrestling competition. Salt on the ground. <laughs> he's not that big of a guy. Well, he's got the bulk. Uh, yeah, I guess so. When you see him in that dashiki, you realize that he can handle it. In a lot of the scenes in this one, he seems to not even be using his cane to walk around. He's just gone full daredevil, and he can just walk wherever (laughs) he does. In the later movies, he starts relying on his cane more. There's the return of Tane, who was the love interest from the first movie. She comes back. She's in the second movie as well. Yep, and she's in the fourth. And she continues her sad, sad life. And that's all I have to say about that. That's all I have to say. That's all I have to say, yeah. I wish we could see the side of you more often. Or less often. I can't figure yeah. out which yet. I don't I don't know, man. Um, let's do some packages. I got your package right here. Which one the, do you want? I want the brown paper. You want the brown one? Okay. I got this one. 
This one is from Jack over there in Little Ferry, New Jersey. This is from Hannah in Mendon, MI. That's Michigan. This is a little bit of film of Destiny of Cleopatra. That's a Cecil B. DeMille movie. Cecil. <laughs> and then we also have something from War and Peace with Henry Fonda and Audrey Hepburn. The old Super 8 cameras, you could also use them as a projector. Yeah, look, look at, at that. that. That's cool. Yeah, okay. What's she That's... saying her letter? She watches our show with her dad. Nice. Now every once in a while he will ask me to bring your show for us to watch together. We brought a family closer together. That's good. And she found a box of 8mm films that were going to be thrown out and grabbed them up. That's oh, great. See. Yeah, this is what unboxing is all about. And from Jack, we've got, ooh, neat, a Reservoir Dogs postcard. He's a friend of Andrew who sends us postcards. He's his buddy on the Wages of Cinema podcast. Okay, yeah. And we've got a DVD here called Green Eyes. Green Eyes. Well, thank you. Postcard time. We've got this giant postcard from Lloyd in Cardiff who says, Our show has made him a better writer, a better film watcher, and indeed, a better person. Well... My pleasure. That one catches a lot of wind. Yes. From our good buddy T.A. Epley in Charlotte. We've got a baseball team there. Wyatt and Allie were in the Seattle airport where I once was, and they sent a Sub Pop postcard just like I gave you back that's, in the day. That's right. Take that, Kill Rock Star postcards. Speaking of Andrew, we got another one from him. Kind of a creepy one there. Yeah, it is creepy. And he tells a little story about the Queen Mab speech from Romeo and Juliet, which you don't like. Well, I have my problems with it, yes. This is from Bob from Baltimore. Eight Man Spaceman. Hey, Mr. Eight Man. And this is from Nick C. and Jacob. It says San Diego, but then it says Tucson Stage Crew. A little bit of mystery there. Yeah. Recently on this show, we watched a post apocalypse movie called Panic in Year Zero. So today's poem is inspired by another post apocalypse movie a movie called Z for Zachariah. Now, in case you haven't seen that movie, this poem does contain a little bit of a spoiler. Like I've said in the past, if you want to avoid it, you can just mute the video when you see the title of the poem appear, and when it disappears, you can unmute and continue watching the show. That way you will be spoiler-free. And poetry-free. As for myself, there's no escaping. Nope. This is called Z to A. In the future times you've heard so much about. The earth reduced to that which envies the ash. Something about extinction. Something about hubris. The hand of God moves across the poisoned cloud. Something about mercy. I shall spare thee from this, the second flood, my broken promise. A pocket in the earth buds and blooms. Something about verdant. Something about promised. Something about spared. Persons persist against the fires and terminal rot. Something about fortitude. But the biblical pageants play out again. Covetousness. Wrath and plain old humans, something about cycles, something about a rock to the forehead, something about a hidden body at the bottom of a creek, something about a story that gets edited out of the new scripture. All right. It's a spoiler, but... I didn't notice what the spoiler was. Something about a spoiler. <laughs> well, it's good. <laughs> you should check it out. It's good. Uh, Chuatel Ejiofor is in that movie. Oh, when Maybe. did it come out? I've never even heard of this thing. It came out a couple years ago. Huh. The rest of the packages. I'll give you the big box. I'll take the little. Weird. It's got a weird center of gravity to it. <laughs> Come on, you bastard. Open up. Come on, you bastard. What do you got? Making it rain. <laughs> <laughs> Whole lot of postcards from... Uh, Vincent from San Marcos, California. I believe he sent us some last, last month, too. Pretty soon you are going to be drowning in postcards. I will die like... Draco, but with postcards. Very obscure Roman stories. He drowned in postcards? No, he drowned in cloaks. <laughs> People, like, they were, like, in, in tribute, they would throw their jackets on someone in tribute, and he just he was in a large crowd, and he suffocated. That's insane. But he deserved it because the term draconian. Right, right. Yeah, it comes from him. Let me open up this record-shaped package. Oh, boy, this is going to be fun. There is no note, but I have to assume this is from T.A. Epley. If it's not, my apologies, but uh, there's no identification in here. And this is a fun one from Elvis in Memphis. That's Elvis Presley? 
He's not the only Elvis in this world, you know. <laughs> 1969, so it's right after the comeback special. Oh, yeah. This has In the Ghetto on it. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Any day now? Any day now. Late period Elvis. Well, that's it for unboxing. We hope that you had a good time, and you can see our latest episode of Welcome to the Basement this Friday. We'll see you then. Bye. I'm not going to touch that thing anymore. I don't want your cooties. Ah! Oh. Got it on your hand. <laughs> oh, man. I wish the camera could have seen that. Yeah, that should have been the wide shot. <laughs> this is for Matt, the editor. Don't forget to use the sci-fi title slate and music. You forgot it last year. Go do it right now. Don't wait till you normally do it. Put it in right now. Don't forget, Matt, the editor. You're just as important as Matt, the director, and Matt, the talent. <laughs> Couldn't do the show without you. And they see a mushroom cloud rising over Los Angeles. Forecast for Bakersfield vicinity. Clear and warm. Really warm. Like as warm as you could ever Extremely imagine. Extremely warm. Then it's going to get winter. Aren't you going to stop? They might have valuable goods that you could salvage. We are now road warriors. <laughs> That's right.